<laughs> is that the official song? That is the official. Well, I mean, that's what we're playing right now. This is. Um, I don't mean our official song. That's the song they were talking about. Yeah, this is this <laughs> is Hudson Mohawk Sea Bats. Hudson Mohawk Sea Bats. Wow. And apparently, some people get down to this song. So yeah, apparently that's the song that you're supposed to uh, bang to. Uh, that has good rhythm in it. Um, did you see my tweet? Uh, when, no, uh, when was it? Yesterday. So I uh, watch a, um, a show called New Rockstars, uh, their YouTube channel. Okay. Shout out to New Rockstars. Um, and uh, they have a, a segment called The Break Room. And they, in the episode, they did that beat. They talked about that, and I was all, I was, and I was listening to the Matt Matt ICS episode yesterday or the day before, and I'm going, oh my god! So then I had to post, I posted the video with a timestamp saying when my two worlds collide. Yeah, it's funny yeah. because I after that episode, I found myself kind of like you know, whatever. I, I I don't want to say singing it because that doesn't really you're describe it. it well enough. But yeah, my, you're my, it. my 14, almost 15 year old was like, what are you, what are you singing? What is that? What is that? And then once I pieced together what it was and found it, I sent her a link to the YouTube of it. And she's like, I thought that's what it was. Cause you know, kids, <laughs> kids know what shit is hopefully for different reasons than we uh, have. No, become, they know uh, exactly what it is song. and exactly why it is. Ugh. Especially at 14. Yeah. Yeah. They knew it before we did. I'm sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. sure. They're, they're mad that you know now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that little slice of them is gone. Dad knows. Fuck. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, if you haven't figured out already, this is our podcast. It's Big Sexy Digital Nomad. I'm Big Sexy. And I am the with- Almost Psychic. That's right. We're here uh, to talk about uh, digital nomading, uh, my my journey from Las Vegas resident to worldwide traveler. Um, we're also here to, you know, shoot the shit, <laughs> just talk about life in general, what have you. We have no uh, uh, agenda or machinations other than uh, recording experiences and experiencing life and, and talking about our are, are not just my journey or Joe Beth's journey, but you know, journeys people take and all that kind of stuff. And that sounds way more highfalutin than anything you're about to hear. But uh ride that ride that train. That's right. That's right. And and if if nothing else, fire up the music and get it on, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully uh our the sound of our voice could be the beat you bang to. Ooh. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, if, that, that, if that happens Please write in, write yeah. in, and please, tell please us do. the sound of our voice is the beat you bang to, uh, and then we will know uh, which list to put you on. It is Saturday night, and the mood is right. <laughs> Get it on, or whenever you're. Get it on. Get it on. Once the lights dim low, it's always Saturday night. Yeah. So what's good out in uh, in Sin City there? It's a lovely morning here in Las Vegas. Oh, I'm actually in Henderson, Nevada, uh, but it was a bit of a stressful morning. Um, our puppy dog Fox, shout out to Fox, um, got a uh, has a bad cough, has a bad uh, trachea cough, and all night long he's been coughing and coughing and what have you. And he has a uh, an esophagitis. esophagitis whatever that word is, thing uh, um, that happens in Chihuahuas. He's a Chihuahua, and he's, you know, 12. Mm. Um, and uh, so this morning, my wife took him to the vet uh, to make sure everything caught. They said that he doesn't have any infections. We're worried because we had him boarded for our, our um, my birthday trip a couple weeks ago, or last week. Last week. Jesus, it was just last week. Um 
and uh, we were worried that maybe he caught something in the kennel or what have you. So we took him back to get him checked out. Everything checked out fine. They gave him some cough drops. So he's okay now. But my wife uh, was calling me, telling me that she was uh, stuck at the vet because uh, the car that she took battery died. Mm. Um, it's so, not something. Uh, it's something else, right? Just, just hit it all, right? So uh, she ended up taking a Uber back because I never got the phone call because I was asleep because I'm not a morning person. Uh, I was unconscious and I did not hear my phone. Uh, plus, it looked like she called me via. Um, well, actually, they just got both phone and Facebook Messenger. And if I don't have the phone, I'm definitely not here on Facebook Messenger. So I was out, uh, woke up to that, woke up to her coming back home. And, uh, uh, or rather, woke back up because I saw that. And then she came home. So we had to go get the car and went, drove back to the vet. Luckily, we have two cars uh, ready to jump it. Um, we got to the vet. Uh, I went in the car and it turned over just fine. Uh, my car does have a temperamental ignition. Um, like the, the gear shift has to be just right. Sometimes it'll get offset a little bit and it won't do anything. You got to jiggle it and shake it and make it work. Um, my, my probably doesn't re- didn't realize that. Well, there's also the element of it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. Hey, can you come take a look at this? And then it fucking works fine. We've all had this happen. We've all had that in, happen. In how many situations? Not just with yeah. cars, with with even anything. Yeah. yeah, even with the dog, right? Uh, coughing all night long, all night long, all night long. Load him up, get him to the vet. Not one iota of <laughs> comes out of this dog's mouth uh, until she's leaving the vet of course yeah yeah and i I meant to i meant to record it i knew that was gonna i knew that was gonna happen and i meant to record it last night and i just i just didn't i felt um but i said you i should probably i kept thinking you should probably record this send the audio to them so they can they can hear it so at least they can hear what's going on but again everything turned out okay he's doing all right um Wife is fine. She's back. Uh, um, and here we are. Here yeah, we yeah. are recording for you lovely folks. Version, what, what, what do we call this? Episode 1.2? This is, yeah, episode. Uh, no, no, nobody yeah. will ever know about episode 1.1 1. 1, probably. Right, right. 1.0 1. 1. will be for the Patreons. Yeah, that was, there's there's a little yeah, more to... than uh, some hiccups technically with uh, the first shot at this. So yeah, did you listen back to it? No, not yet. I ended up randomly. I, I um, one of the attorneys that works for me, and I'm I'm in Maryland, like midway between Baltimore and Philadelphia. For those of you who are looking at it on a map or want a little bit of perspective here, um, one of the attorneys that work for me ended up having to go to New York city to get some visas for his passport because his son is in Spain right now, um, studying abroad and he's part of some soccer team or whatever that they recruited him for. And he's like, Hey, you have any reason to want to go to New York city with me? And it was super last minute. I mean, I think it was probably midnight my time that I'm shooting you at text saying, Hey, can we push this a day? Oh, right. I'm, like, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll get in a car and ride up. And we rode up to um, this area in New Jersey where you can just hop a train and go into the city. That way you don't have to worry about parking in the city. Um, I have, in all of the years that I have lived in the East Coast and within two-ish hours of New York City, have uh, never gone and hung out there until yesterday, which was kind of odd. Oh, interesting. And, and there's a, uh, a historic magic shop right there in the center of manhattan that i was like you know what if anything this is an excuse for me to hop in there and check that place out in person and uh so i did that in fact where the train from new jersey lets off right on like 33rd 34th street sort of area it was literally like right around the corner from where the train ran off I'm like oh this is what i came for so you have fun go do your visa thing let me know when you're done 
we grabbed lunch, went and checked out Central Park, and then uh, rode back home. Cool. So that was I mean, a, that's amazing. I, I love stuff like that. Like that that type of the ability to do that, you know, is is one thing I would. That's why I would love if 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 East Coast had West Coast weather. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. If 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 that was swapped, right, I would live on the East Coast because that's the kind of thing I absolutely adore. Well, you have access to so much that, of everything. Right. But the fact that East Coast has East Coast weather, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I, I can't do it. It gets too cold. That's not me. Um yeah, I'm I'm we're, uh, we're team anti winter. Well, you're in you're in the right place to be doing it. Although, and we're we're certainly going to get into this a little bit more here. But um, I mean, what's the in in January? Your your lows are what sixties, forties, forties to forties, forty okay. to forty to forty to high fifty. It can have a it can have a low of forty. So the high yeah. is around fifty, mid fifty. Um, but it, but it's cold. Yeah, right? they talk about you know they talk about a dry heat. Right when it's a hundred what blah 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 degrees, but it's also a dry cold, and that just bites. You know, there's there's something about moisture that adds warmth for some reason, right? That add a little extra insulation. I get I don't know. I, scientists help me out. Um, but yeah, it's it's desert cold is biting. It's just it, and then if the wind blows, it's just oh, it's it's terrible. I'm not and, a fan of that either. And, and to those who are nothing more than occasional visitors to Las Vegas, it's important to step out of the image that you have of Las Vegas as as a tourist, where you might be thinking, well, what difference does the weather make? Because I'm always inside. It, when you live there, you're doing regular people things, just like yeah. you, you know, you, you in Hendo, you, it's just like a normal world there. It's in, not- in any other city. No, not no, no buzzing lights and crazy shit and anything. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's fucking crazies everywhere, but right. th- that that stereotypical isolated to the strip in downtown is not indicative yeah. of Hendo or Sutherland or Summerlin or wherever the hell else you might be. Right. Yeah, I always tell folks, you know, the image of people have of Las Vegas is uh, seven miles. It's the five mile, the five and a half miles of the strip, and the two miles of downtown Las Vegas. And and not not even the mile and a half in between the two spaces, <laughs> right? That exists between yeah. those two. For a lot of people, those two are somehow connected. Um, I know people who said who've come and they're staying like at the Luxor, and say, "Yeah, we're just gonna walk down the, the plaza." No, no, you're not. No. no well, you're not. That's, that's I a... have done it. I have walked. So so I don't know if it was the first or the second ever trip, and this is like, I was in my early twenties at the time um i was staying probably at the flamingo or harrah's depending on when it was my fir- whether it was my first or my second trip and again we're talking right. about forever ago right um this was pre-uber pre anything when I mean, it was and, just and, taxi and 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 i and it's nothing there's nothing there because i walked through basically the desert to go downtown yeah and definitely it's took like a fucking cab back yeah you had the stratus <laughs> It's funny because, uh, you know, any movie or video or or whatever of Vegas, they make it seem like it really is all connected. Like you could go, go, and it's just lights, 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 and all of a sudden you're this and I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me explain to you. One, casinos are the same size as city blocks. Yeah. So you're walking city blocks from one casino to another. Just to get from one casino to another, then you're talking about dozens of uh, you know tens of casinos, uh, you know, on the strip. And once you get it's funny once you get past. Uh, for those who know, I'm going to start naming streets. I do apologize. Uh, Spring Mountain Road, which is where uh, um, the Venetian is and the mirage and treasure island once you hit those casinos across the street is like the win and the encore which are newer casinos right but shit starts to spread out yeah so now there is space 
in their city blocks in between city blocks. I mean, just walking from that area to, let's say, Circus Circus, it, at least now at the age that I'm at now, is like, what the fuck am I doing? If I it's, were a, to it's, do a, that. it's a mile and a half walk. It's yeah. a mile because if you think of it in terms of streets, right? I think of it now in terms of freeway exits. I know that uh, the um, Sahara Casino is on Sahara, and I know that the Venetia is on Spring Mountain Road, and that is uh, a mile and a half on the freeway, let alone on foot on a curving street. You know. And it's not as in, I know that you know if you're walking like say you're walking from the tip of the strip, which is the Mandalay Bay, uh, to you know another strip in the middle of whatever, you do have the distractions of big yeah. glamorous lights and peoples and weird things to see, so you're not noticing that. But once you get past you know Encore and Win, it is just it's desolate. It's you know there are there's a casino that they haven't built. Uh, the Fountain Blue is there now. It's just you know big giant empty construction space um i mean the building's there but nothing exciting about it you got a cvs and cheap ass hostels on the other side of the road you know then you got nothing until you get to the sahara you know you'll, you'll pass circus circus and then the sahara and then the stratosphere and then pass the stratosphere <laughs> that is where you go oh wait this is sketchy yeah <laughs> Well, buddy, I, I don't know, a year or two ago, I don't remember when, because I'm I'm out there enough that pre-pandemic, I was actually looking at purchasing a second house out there because I was like, gotcha. fuck it. it. It's it sucks to have to just haul shit out here. And, and kind of the counterpoint yeah. to that was, hey, the casinos always put you up for free, so why pay and buy a place? And I'm like, well, there's a whole lot of tax shit that, that is reasons for that. But also, right. like, just having shit here and being able to leave shit here and not have to, like, you know, you, you talk about the freedom of just hopping on a plane and not checking a bag. Imagine hopping on a plane and taking fucking nothing because I'm right. not shit there. Just um, to close on your back. But the pandemic hit and that all went to shit, but... I think it was last year, maybe it was the year before, but I was out there with a buddy of mine that, you know, for one reason or another, and it's a normal tourist trap, he wanted to go and check out the uh, the pawn shop from uh, Pawn Stars, which was super not exciting once you get there. But I mean, nope. it's the it's the place that they shoot the stuff in so you can recognize it or whatnot. And from there, we, and we took an Uber there and then... I was just like, all right, cool. And then we'll walk downtown from there. Even that's not like right next door. <laughs> like that's a bit of a haul and not through the best part of town for sure. Right. Um, right. And, and it literally, I'm like, what are you like a six year old kid? Like how many times are you going to ask me if we're there yet? Um, just, just in that little walk. So that's, that's right. And listeners, we're doing amazing work for the Vegas tourism community. But just be aware, we're trying to provide knowledge. That's correct. For for visitors coming to Vegas, uh, we we understand first timers. You may have an idea of what it is. Uh, I'm telling you, it's not that. Just be prepared. Wear comfortable shoes if you think you're going to walk around. It's, it's it's big. It is big. I don't mind. I love it. I I don't love the walking. I buy, hop in the car and you know. That's one thing. Uh, that's how I knew I could live here. You know when uh, uh when I came when I was come into Vegas quite frequently. I used to live, for those who don't know, I used to live in Southern California, uh, born and raised in the Inland Empire, uh, go IE. And uh, I was in a jack-in-the-box when I realized that I could live in Las Vegas. I remember the exact moment. I was uh, uh, I was here with my mom, and we were staying at um, New Mon the Monte Carlo. Okay. Which and, is now Park MGM. Which is now Park MGM. The only smoke-free casino in Las Vegas, unless I, I believe so. I believe so. Um, and uh, I needed to go to the bank, so I hop in the car, and there's no banks on the strip, which I thought odd, because you think that's where they want the money, but no, no, no. They want you to pay five dollar ATM fees. Yes. 
And so they move the banks a distance away. Yeah, or, or more, right. So I hop in the car and I drive to a bank and this bank I go to happens to be across the street from the Jack in the Box and I love Jack in the Box egg rolls. Go Jack in the Box. Um, not, not a sponsor, but if you know if they want to give us some money, I'm down. Um, and I'm in there and I order my egg rolls and taken by this nice, lovely, old, older Mexican lady. And she's standing there and she's taking my order. And I step back and I'm looking at her and the thought hits my brain, this woman lives in Las Vegas. She resides here. When she leaves here, she's going home, and her home is in Las Vegas. Her address says Las Vegas, Nevada. Worst case scenario, I could work at a Jack in a Box and live in Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. And have Las Vegas in my address. And I'm way more talented than the worst case scenario. I like to think in Um, so yeah, so I will uh, that get, had the knowledge that I can live here. I said, Oh, I'm moving to Las Vegas. I don't know when. I mean it took another, I don't know, 12, 13 years after that, but I still did it. Um but that's how I knew it. That's how I knew I could live here, you know. Um and uh, yeah, it's interesting that this, that the Vegas chapter of Big Sexy is coming to a close. You're gonna, you're, there's a bookmark in it though. So it's not oh, close, I'm, close. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, my, as a resident, right? As a resident, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be living here again. I, I never say never, but if I do, it will be a brand new chapter. So I guess that that's a good kind of segue into spilling it for what's what's the plan here because we haven't really touched on the digital nomad thing this is the this is the bridge to explain it all um, perfect obviously some yeah. people who are listening might already know but uh let's let's have it you've lived in vegas yeah. for how long so i moved to vegas in 2009 so i've lived here uh for 13 years um uh i met my lovely wife out here uh Shout out to Nella Berry White. Um, and a uh, wife has not wanted to live in Vegas since before I knew her. Since before I knew her. Um, and has been dying to leave Las Vegas and ended up staying pretty much one because I'm here, uh, because our relationship formed. And two, uh, she's a marriage and family therapist and ended up going to UNLV to get her master's and then got licensed here. So, you know, work kind of, school and work kind of kept her here. But now, with the weight of the world, uh, we are leaving the country. Uh, we are going to start as Digital Nomads, hence the title, uh, where um, the digital part is wife can work remotely uh, while we travel the world. Um it's going to be very interesting for me because I won't have to work, uh, which is nice. I'll be able to focus on my creative aspects and my creative ventures. Uh, I am writing a musical, so we'll be keeping you abreast on how that's going here. Uh, I'm currently uh, putting together a book of poetry. Uh, um, so I'll be able to focus on that. I have some theater stuff that I'm doing, some acting. I'm a DJ. So all these other gig work that I have had to set aside to have a full-time job to handle healthcare. Um, I'll be able to set that down, the job, put that away, not have to worry about that and focus on my other exploits. Because when you travel the world, you, uh, a lot of places in the world have universal healthcare. So a uh, wife has done her research and ideally where we're gonna land is Portugal. Uh, probably in Lesbo, I mean, Lesbian. <laughs> um, Freudian slip? <clears throat> uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Freudian like lesbians, which I'm sure he does. I mean, <laughs> um, uh, Les 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 Lisbon, not Lesbian, Lisbon, um, or Porto, um, Portugal. But we're going to start by leaving here and going to Panama and being in Panama City and then be there for three months and then uh, go to Costa Rica 
after that, uh, and then make our way to Portugal. Uh, we want to hit Spain. Um, but the idea is to land and reside in Portugal. Uh, so hopefully, um, uh, the, the, the goal of this whole thing that we're doing now with uh, me and the Almost Psychic is, uh, you know, having a place to uh, document that journey and talk about it and share that experience and, you know, give uh, our listeners um, a, 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 a vicarious uh, access to uh, this experience. You know, and, you know, people who may think they oh I would love to do that how do they have to go about it so hopefully I'll be able to talk about all the different steps um that go into doing so so what's the time frame we we are currently recording this mid-September it probably won't you're probably not listening to this till October at the earliest um because we're gonna knock a few of these out and have it all cleaned up and ready to go before we start dropping episodes so the time frame is so we're leaving Las Vegas uh, end of January. Our lease is up January twenty eighth, uh, so we will be out of Vegas by then because we're not renewing another lease out here. Um, initially, we were going to hop on a plane and go from that point on. Um, however, uh, we just recently came back from a cruise, and wife has been looking at. It hit me with the idea of what if we cruise from the U.S. to one of our next cities? And she has been looking up cruise ideas, and there's a really inexpensive cruise from, I think it's New York to Panama. And I mean, like, super inexpensive, like under $100 oh, uh, wow. per, 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 per person per night, right? Um, yeah. It's like $49, $50 per night uh, for a 15-day cruise. For, I think from New York to Panama. Um, and, uh, but it leaves in April. But it leaves in April. So we may head back to California, uh, stay with the parentals for a couple months. Um, uh, you know, stockpile that extra money and then, and then go then. So, you know, uh, it's very possible that I may come on here each week or each episode and tell you new, completely different plans because that it's fluid, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. So now we're going to uh, Ecuador, and then we're going. <laughs> you know, I have no idea. Uh, wife logs it in. We'll we'll definitely have to have my wife on. Uh, um, she can fill us in and and talk about it as well. But I mean, that's cool. You know, like everybody gets swept up in the day to day kind of rat race of you know get up get ready, go to work, work the job, go home, maybe do something recreational, pass out, rinse, repeat. And, you know, you know what tomorrow is going to be and you know what next week's going to be with obviously the exception that's of, of unplanned snafus like a dog with a cough in a car that doesn't start. But right. other than that, like everything is just so, it, it's so rare. I mean, like, like I was saying before, like that random trip I took to New York City yesterday is the first time I'm 41 years old. What year is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm 41 years old. And other than I took my kid years ago to an Orioles Yankees game. So we drove to the Bronx, parked, went to the stadium, left, drove home. So no real New York City time. We went, right. you know, when you're in the stadium, you're kind of in that encapsulated the, world. The stadium is still in a freaking city. Yeah. I've driven through New York City, I can't tell you how many times, but never stopped, never parked, never did anything. So, you know, 41 years in, most of which I've either, I have lived either on the East Coast or in New York State, because I went to undergrad in Rochester, New York. So in the same fucking state, although we'll get to how stupid people are. Um, I've got a good story about that. Um, but then I lived for two years in Chicago. So other than that, I have lived here, like within striking distance, like it was a two hour drive to the train station, a 20 minute train into Midtown Manhattan. And I had never done it before. But yeah, funny thing, I, I was an undergrad in Rochester, um, 21 years ago when, when the, uh, when 9-11 was and 
everything you know that day went crazy and and it was wonky and you know cell phones were not the technology that they are today and cell phone towers were all busted up and screwy and everything like that right. and i i remember afterwards friends from home reaching out to me to make sure that i was okay and and i'm like can you pull out a map because again this is 21 <laughs> years ago right you, you are are you okay because you are currently closer to ground zero than i am <laughs> um, because they were they, like i'm i'm two three hours away and in rochester that's like four or five hours away right and i was like bro are you okay because <laughs> you are bro. you are you are closer to new york city than i am you are closer to the pentagon than i am and you are closer to wherever that is in the middle of nowhere, all that madness, yeah all, all of the shit happened closer to you than to me even though i'm happened to be in the state that it that it happened right. in so I get it. Yeah. When I used to live in California, something happened in the Bay Area. I would get messages from people. I'm like, you know, I'm in Southern California. Which, which is what? Like eight, 10 hours away? It's uh, like six to eight. Six, six to eight, to eight yeah. hours away. Like, that. I, I, yeah, I'm fine. Yep. I'm all good. set. <laughs> you know, same thing with the, with the wildfires. The wildfires would happen in California. It'd be like in Malibu. I'm, a, I'm 80 miles away from Malibu. Uh, no, the, the fires haven't reached here. If the fires get to me from Malibu, <laughs> you're going to definitely hear it because there's a whole lot of shit between me and Malibu. Oh, yeah. That has now also burned down. Uh, so, yeah, no, we're good. We're good out here. Ooh. Sorry, y'all. It is morning for yours truly. And, and as I said in the beginning, I am not a morning person, but I will do this for you, our intrepid listeners. Um, yeah, so, uh, the next step, right? So we're, we're getting, we're taking the first steps into doing this journey, right? Um, so the big thing that we're doing now is we're listing all our stuff to sell, right? Cause we got to pretty much sell everything. And that's, that is an exhausting experience as so far, um, just the, inventory and documenting of everything and putting it up so that folks know what you got so they can ask, ask to try to whittle you down from the price you're asking <laughs> price you're asking for is a lot um so that that is our the current experience that we're going through um I'll tell you, that's a pain in the ass because I, so we just bought a new house that we have not taken possession of, but we closed on it like two weeks ago and the sellers of that house are renting back from us until the end of October because they're building a new house and it's not ready yet. We listed our house on the market a couple of days before that one, before we closed. And among it is just a bunch of stuff that. We, we don't intend to take with us. So it was like this long list and, and mostly furniture. Um, you know, this bedroom set, that bedroom set, these things, just random ass shit. And we just got that list back today. And every box that is checked on that list is just a, oh, it's one less thing I have to fuck with. Like, right. it's, it's one less thing that I have to either list to sell somewhere else or put it on the curb or anything. I don't have to fucking move it. And right. it's just like fantastic. And and I mean, don't get me wrong, we priced the shit to move. Like there's an entire king bedroom set that we listed for like 250 bucks. And oh, it wow. would it would oh, probably wow. be if you were to buy it new, and it's certainly not new. So, <laughs> but if you were to go buy the same thing new, it'd be like three grand or thirty five hundred. And right. You know, and we know you put your work on that bed set, so we, we get it. It, we it, it it has um it has has some experience that is that is that's where sure. that's where the real that's where the real magic happened it, it may it, it may not have uh <laughs> it may not have heard that song that we intro with but... it was it was making its own music but i got another like 40 days so yeah so yeah. you got some time you got some time to add to its lore that's right <laughs> introduce it that's right yeah i gotta just from my I gotta, I gotta take a picture of this bed i got like i'm looking around the room going okay i gotta take a picture of that dress over there i gotta take a picture of this desk this tv 
uh, these tray tables, this little gesture that I got over here. Um, I have a giant cat tree that luckily, the interesting thing didn't belong to me, but we've had it for almost 10 years, nine years. So the, the story behind the cat, I have two cats. I have uh, Sebastian and Shuri who are laying on the bed right off to my um, right over here. If we ever play this video, you'll know which way I was pointing, but you won't see them because I'm not moving the camera. Uh, the huge cat tree, like it's at least six feet tall, and giant, multi-level, heavy, natural wood, carpeted covers, you know, big cage on the bottom uh, that uh, a friend of ours, it belongs to a friend of our sister. She moved to England um, and didn't, and couldn't figure out to get rid of it. The sister was like, I don't really, we don't have I'll, I'll, we'll take it. We'll, we'll hold it forward till she gets back, you know, and let our cats use it or whatever. So we've had it since then. Um, and I, I recently had to reach out to my friend, like, hey, so uh, with this cat tree, what do you want to do with it? Because uh, I know we've held on to it forever and ever and ever, but we're leaving the country. We're not taking this big ass thing with us. Uh, we're not going to pay the five fifteen thousand dollars it cost to ship this heavy ass thing. Yeah, no shit. Everywhere we go. Um, so that's another thing, right? There's another thing. Uh, but I, I would say there's a lot to envy in what you're doing because I, I know that you guys are planning on storing and 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 transporting some stuff at some point in time. But I would imagine yes. that is going to be such a small amount of stuff. Like in moving for us, it's just like. All right. The, just the thought process of what are we going to get rid of? What are we going to start over with? Everything like that. And to kind of pick through and you just you want to keep so much more shit that you should than you should. And like, you know, one of the one of the rules of thumb, I think, and, and we did the opposite of this, actually, but we got one of those. Um, I'm assuming that they have something like this out there where they'll bring a storage container to you. You load it up instead of going to a storage facility where you haul all your shit to it and load it right. in, they bring the, the storage container to you, you load it up, lock it, and then they come back and pick it up. Yeah. And, and it's called pods. Yeah. Pods is one company. We, yeah. we did one that is uh, like a local company or a smaller like franchise thing called cows. And it's like container on wheels or something like that. Oh, interesting. Um, so literally like the, with the pods, and, and other companies like that, they have like this, this apparatus that's almost like a, a forklift that's attached to the truck. So they'll come and pull up near your driveway and then unload the thing using this forklift. The, the thing that we got actually is on wheels itself. So it's like a trailer and they just unload it, unhitch it, and then come back and hitch back up to it. I have no idea if that's more efficient or not. I don't really give a fuck. Uh, but, but generally like the rule of thumb for stuff like that is you know for us we loaded that thing maybe about a month ago so anything that went in it were without for about three months and yeah. with a handful of exceptions there were things that were put in there by design things that it's like okay we will use these but not with this frequency like i have professionally made poker tables I have boxes full of magic books, but not all of my magic books. And I'm not going to get rid of my magic books, but I'm not necessarily reading all of them every day, which right. is the case with any books for that matter. Um, but I know damn well, there's some stuff in that container that needs to come out of that container and be like, we haven't touched this for three months. We don't give a shit. Put it in a dumpster. Like, right. it, it, it's got to be a great test in how to pare shit down with, again, with certain exceptions if you're not using it with a frequency that you can miss it for three months, then why the fuck have it in the first place? Right. And again, right. books are an exception to that. And you know. we live in a, a, we very much live in a just in case society, right? Oh, very yeah. much. Oh, why do you have it? Well, just in case I need, it, then I know I have it. And if you haven't, you know, and, and I would say, if you haven't needed it in two years, you won't need it in two years. Right. Which you can get rid of it. And my the mantra I've been working on uh, adhering to my life is that we make enough money 
that if I need something, I can get it. If I had it and I got rid of it and I need it again, I can get it. That is my travel mantra. Like my wife gets mad at me because of two things. And they both have to do with me. Tra- I mean, there's there's definitely more than two. Um, <laughs> yeah, but only two? Oh, only you got two. A bless- you live yeah. a blessed life, son. Wouldn't it be? <laughs> Wouldn't it be? Two per hour on average, including sleeping time. Um, number one, I don't pack until literally like the night before I'm going somewhere. And I only pack the night before I go somewhere because I generally like to take the earliest flight into somewhere. And the Who's- latest the latest flight out of somewhere. What well, uh, weirdos packing before then? Her. <laughs> I don't know when the next trip that she's taking is, but she's probably already got a checklist for what she needs to pack. Um, <laughs> the the and, and I totally adhere to that philosophy of if I've forgotten to put something in this bag, fuck it. They have stores there. And yes. I can get another one. Or like I, I went and played in some world series of poker events back in 2019 and flew out there and realized that among the things that I didn't pack were pants or shorts or anything other than obviously I was wearing the pants that I hopped on the airplane in. And I just wore those, I just wore the same fucking pants, you know, jeans the whole week or whatever that I was out there. I know that's probably disgusting to some people, but it's nah, fucking pants. whatever. Pl- plenty of underwear, plenty of socks, yeah. plenty of shirts for whatever reason. Long, long you don't spill on them or get them too right. messy or whatever. They, yeah, they, they laughed. And and had I the ability to just go to, like I was actually, that time I was staying at Planet Hollywood. So I have access to the Miracle Mile shops. I wouldn't have even had to go too far to pay too much for a pair of pants. Right. But exactly. it, it's just, the other thing that I do related to travel that really pisses her off is that uh, when I come back, typically I take, you know, I will separate my dirty clothes because usually, um, you know, those dry cleaning bags that are hanging in the hotel closet is where my dirty clothes go. I think everybody does that. Pretty and, close to it. And, 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 and if you don't, this is, this is a, a PSA to the hotel run the people that run and, and stock this stuff. If you don't put one in there, you might be missing a pillowcase if I'm staying in your room. <laughs> uh, otherwise, that's where my dirty clothes are going to get home at the end. So all that stuff is generally separated. And any clean clothes that I didn't use stay packed in that bag. And my wife is like, what the fuck is this? And I said, it's called pre-packing. All right. Because I travel enough, whether it be for work-related stuff or recreational stuff or now more and more booking magic gigs i'm i'm on the road on the regular and i, I mean it's not really like a go bag like i'm not going to get some call today being like hey we got a gig for you in such and such can you be there tomorrow because it just doesn't work that way right um but at least you already have you but, know but i gotta have a bag packed and and that half a bag is packed from a trip that i went on two weeks ago so yeah, yeah, I I've I have found the the uh I I take I usually take one trash bag with me and I I have I have started doing that for dirty clothes or whatever whatever. Um and I will uh, I'm I'm the weirdo who at the end of the trip like I if I stay in a hotel or someplace I'm the weirdo who unloads the suitcase, the entire suitcase and uses the hotel's drawers. Oh, oh the dresser and the drawers. Yeah, I mean, it's a closet. I use it like I, like his home. Um, and when I leave, I repack my suitcase and any clothes that I haven't worn or that are clean get packed on the bottom. That trash bag covers those clothes and then the dirty clothes get piled right on top. Easy in, easy out. Easy in, Easy out. Don't gotta worry about anything. Uh um and the, the trash bag usually holds the dirty clothes while uh depending on how long the stay is while we're in the hotel room and then I take off goes in the trash bag so I know where everything is because I hate running around trying to find missing socks or drawers or you know, where are the swim trunks? Uh I hate that. I really hate that. So I I've I've learned those kind of travel hacks. Uh, as well 
it's why I hate uh, the last airline that we took out to Miami. Uh, uh, I won't say the names so they'll come after me, but it rhymes with spear shit. Um, <laughs> it would have been my guess. Yeah, you'd have been right. Yeah, everyone knows. Because um, their uh, weight limit on the check bag is only 40 pounds. And we're doing a five day cruise, so that is, those are and then we're, and the only one check bag for both of us, right? Because right. we didn't want to pay the extra sixty dollars to to yeah, it's fucking crazy do whatever, right? So we're like, oh, this is rude. Because had we, it's funny when we got back. I'm looking at my clothes, going, oh man, I wish I could have had that there. Oh, I wish I could have worn this there. Oh, this would have been perfect for that night. Instead, I had to wear, you know, the the whatever I wore. Oh man, I should have took it. So, uh, never again. Never you say again. that now, but I, I will tell nope. you that that, that particular... I'll tell you right now, never again will I fly that airline. I, I, I will. S- I have said it before, I, and then enough. It's like Panda Express. You ever read a Panda Express? I love Panda Express. You you actually love Panda Express? I actually love Panda Express. Yes. So so my opinion on Panda Express is a little deviant from that. Um, I love the idea of Panda Express, and then I, I go there you. and I eat there, and I'm like, why the fuck did and I you're do this? Right. And then there's a good six eight months that I can keep that in my mind, and then as that as that not so impressive experience wears away, I'll drive by Panda Express, be like, ooh, Panda Express. <sighs> Okay, then, I will say this. And then, it, say then, this. then it starts all over for me. I will say this. If I need to get from one location to another and I can get there in just the clothes I have on or anything that can fit in the backpack and I don't have to do anything else, I would fly spirit. If it's a short hopper, like if I had to fly from Vegas to California, yeah, or, or you know California to California, or you know, yeah, you're already Vegas starting to rationalize it, <laughs> right? Any it, it, one, it has to be an under two hour flight because the seats are not really comfortable past that po- moment, and I don't have to have any luggage. That means I don't have to pay anything extra. Yeah, which if is if I can get the actual base value of that cheap ass ticket. Then, which, is, then. which is always how they get you. And I know that there are people and, and, and these people may very well be listening because I know that they're ice cream social listeners that like swear by this airline and these uh, pharmacists from Chicago, who I won't name either, love this airline that we're talking about. And I'm, I, I, I was chatting with them about this. I don't know whether it was in Vegas or whether it was in Erie, Pennsylvania or somewhere that we ran into each other. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? How do you, how do you like have this love? Like, it's not a, I can tolerate and I've learned how to, you know, these are the hacks that I use to, to, to get through right. this. They love this airline. And I'm like, how you, you, you and I have different definitions of love. Do they and, own stock? Like what the fuck? And, uh, I don't know. I mean, I do, but that's that's not because I love the airline. It's just because I know that how they how they make their money. Because it's like, right. hey, hey, seventy nine dollar flight. Oh, you want a seat? Okay, yeah. twenty more. <laughs> you want to pick yeah. that seat? Another twenty dollars. You yeah, want a bag? Yeah. You want to breathe? You want a water? Here you go. And cha ching, you end up spend, paying more than Southwest by the time you get done. Right. And, you know, the one thing that I've started to do with travel especially like if it's just me for the most part i I can get away without having to check a bag but now i've gotten to the point where assuming that we're on the southwest where i normally fly or sometimes i'll fly um american but usually only at distance only if i it's the only way i can get a direct flight and and usually only if it's first class so it has to be a long flight because i won't justify paying first class to fly two hours like so it's like right. the opposite of your your spirit analysis like i will fly across the country this way but that's it um right. i will fly international but that's it um is that as far as like the weight restriction and everything like that's concerned if i'm allowed to check two bags i'm going to check two bags even if i don't need it i'll just spread it along the two bags because if i've got to go to that carousel and i've got to wait for something anyway fuck it i might as well make it, Use it all. 
That way, if right. I buy something, I could bring it back. I don't have to worry about the weight. If I've forgotten something. I am a big fan of checking one bag that has another bag inside of it. Yeah. I, 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 I have, yeah. on more than one occasion, knowing that I'm going someplace for recreational purposes, and I know I'm going to buy shit there that I want to yeah. bring back home, I have, I have, I have a large suitcase, and I've, I've, uh, have a carry on, and I will pack my suitcase very, very lightly, and then put it in the other lightly. bag. And and put all my clothes in the in the um the carry bag. on, and put my carry on bag in the check bag. Oh wow! And then and then I'm carrying. I'm gonna have to drag nothing in the airport, but my backpack that has my headphones and books in it. I'm not worrying about that. Knowing that on my return flight, my bigger suitcase will have the dirty clothes in it. My check bag will have the stuff that I bought in it, and then I have my backpack. Travel hacks 101, right? Travel here. hacks. That's right. Well, Big sexy digital nomad travel that's hacks. That's right. And, and what, what what more would you expect than travel hacks from, from a digital nomad podcast, right? You know, yeah, we'll find exactly. our lane. We'll, we'll get exactly. In there. I'll, I'll tell you right now, as far as my carry ons, I have it, it took me a long time to find, but I have a backpack style. And it's one of those ones that like you can reconfigure all the shit to carry it different ways, but I use right. it as a backpack. And then I have like an over the shoulder bag and those two when properly packed will both fit under my seat on any Southwest flight. Nice. So having both of them under my seat, because I don't want my shit all over the place or out of the way or anything like that. I know that I don't have to put anything in an overhead bin. I don't have to worry about, you know, getting slid somewhere else and my shit somewhere else or any of that kind of stuff like easy peasy it's all right to fuck here like my wife didn't understand that this is what i was doing because a lot of my travel is does is solo travel so um you know she doesn't go on a lot of these trips and you know a lot of these trips are going and meeting uh college football players because i'm also an nfl agent and um <laughs> okay Episode two, we got to get into your life. Oh, all, all the hats that I wear? Yeah, we'll do that. I'm, just, say, I'm just saying, we, we got to get into to, to who Joe Beth the Alma Psychic is. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. Every, every time we talk, there's another nugget like, oh, I got I to gotta write this down. Yeah, you want to know why you didn't see much of me at Scoop Fest? Because it was the same weekend as the NFL draft. NFL that's draft. In, that's what I was in town for. So, uh, and that is definitely another story for another day because getting to there from what was McCarran is now Reed was a fucking, Reed. was a fucking nightmare and a half. Um, Cause you could see if you haven't flown into Vegas before you can see the strip from the airport. Yeah. It's that close. And it took me fucking two hours to get there because and of the yeah, traffic. It's that close. And it's that far. Yeah. yeah so yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We definitely have to have a segment in this podcast called, uh, uh, the uh, Joe Beth and Big Sexy's travel stories. Yeah, and, the, and I think gotta, there's going to be a lot of that because you're going to be a doing lot of a that. ton of it, and it's I'm going to be traveling soon. Yeah, doing it, a lot it's, of it. It's going to become your lifestyle. It is regular for me. Um, you know, and, and and not all of my travels to Vegas, just a lot of it. I'm usually out there eight to ten times a year for various reasons. Um, but yeah, maybe we should um, we should let people know how to get in touch with us. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, if you're looking for, oh, so God, I have so many. I just forgot what I'm doing social media wise. So right now, I am at Who Is Big Sexy pretty much anywhere uh, except for Facebook, where it's Big's Xy because Facebook is stupid. And I'm willing to say that my name is stupid because uh, they wouldn't let me have Big Sexy. So you had to game so it. I had to put the S on the G. Um, so you can follow me there on 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 Twitter. Who is big sexy? At who is big sexy? Instagram at who is big sexy? Uh, you can also follow me and my wife's adventure in this whole realm uh, at colorful underscore humans underscore global. Um, if you just go to who at who is big sexy, you'll see links there and stuff like that. How about you? 
Um, if as far as like the easiest socials to get me on are either Instagram or Twitter, and I am psychic ish, uh, pretty easy. And you won't, unless you have a mutual friend, you won't find me on Facebook because I had locked down my security, my privacy settings some time ago. So if you want some link to me on the Facebook, which I would absolutely get rid of if I didn't have business pages on there, right. um, the best thing is to follow Elkton Magic, E-L-K-T-O-N Magic, and then just shoot a message through there, and then I will figure out who you are, and then I will friend you. <laughs> um, a little roundabout way, but Twitter and Instagram are wide open at Psychic-ish. Yes, and... Uh... Eventually, I'm pretty sure we'll have a social media presence for this podcast here uh, with some interesting name uh, naming uh, thing that we have created because things like Twitter, you can only have 15 characters in the name. Um, and there's more in Big Sexy Digital Nomad than 15, so we'll have to play with that. Um but stay tuned. We'll, we'll figure some social media stuff out. So if you take there. the if you take the acronym for big sexy digital nomad and you mix up the letters is, is yeah if you B, do bsdm you, you, is you think bdsm is taken already yeah but i think bdsm might be out there yeah uh, uh big <laughs> digital sexy nomad yeah oh yeah uh, is that yeah. what that stands for yeah bdsm <laughs> big oh you, you like oh you like bdsm too yeah i'm all about the big digital sexy nomad yeah so uh uh that that you're going to have very fun uh, internet searches uh, when you search for our acronym. So uh, don't do it at work. Yeah, or we'll, do it at work and, and challenge your boss. Here, we'll give ourselves a deadline of episode five. By the time we get to episode five, we'll be dropping you an actual URL or an actual Twitter handle that is dedicated to this podcast. This podcast. Until then, and even after then, Hit us up on social media because we always have shit going on. I've got, I, I'm getting more and more inquiries about booking shows. You do DJ or not DJing, uh, karaoke and, and I, I and, do host karaoke. I DJ weddings. So if you're getting married, I also officiate weddings. So if you need an officiant, hey, uh, the one stop shop for a wedding here, you can get yourself a DJ, an officiant, a magician. Like, what the fuck more do you need? Maybe right, a cake. Right. We don't do cakes, but hey, I don't do cake, but I, but again, I know people. Yep. Oh yeah. You know. Uh so yeah, so thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed our 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 second attempt at our first episode. Yeah, hit us up. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want from us because Yeah. Other than also, telling crazy right, travel writing stories. with your own travel stories. Yes, yes, yes. Hit us up with your travel stories. We want travel those. stories, travel hacks. Why not? Travel hacks, absolutely. Yeah, we may, we make it to a point where we're able to read that stuff on air um and have a, a a listener letter segment um like a lot of our favorite podcasters do so uh until then i've been big sexy and the almost psychic take care this has been big sexy digital nomad